I am one of the Tiftanen. My family comes from villages along this side of the river. So I grew up my whole life knowing this area, knowing this creek and this part of the river, what these trees are, what these bushes are, and it's still one of my all-time favorite places to come. This is water that I grew up drinking and that my grandmother would only drink this water. She wouldn't drink tap water. For her whole life that I've known her, she, she wouldn't drink tap water from anywhere. It was only this water. Um, and if it was really bad conditions, she would drink Pepsi. What happened in the own while? There was such a severing when the boarding schools and when the miners came and said, if you talk that, we're going to beat you or we're going to kill you. That was real. My grandmother, she was shipped off to a boarding school. It's always one thing to hear that when you're sitting on the other side of the screen, but then when all of a sudden it's your grandma telling you, you don't need to learn this language. It's not going to do anything but get you hurt. I'm not teaching you. Why, why would you say that? I really like it, Grandma. From the time I was like 16 to like 20, I wanted to learn and I would ask questions and I would get nouns. Kedivkit, chair, umkit, table, great. I have a little bit of vocabulary, but I could not actually speak. When she saw that, my cousins, my brothers and sisters, that we were all starting to talk together and asking questions about it, and it's safe. They're not getting hurt. They're not getting beat. They're not getting threatened. So then she started to step forward. Well, this is how I say it. This is how I remember being told. Understanding that language, understanding that ecosystem, and understanding that culture, and how they can be woven together, that's the only true recipe for success, for revitalization of all three. When you say, then it's the name, that specifically means my land. But when you say my land, we're talking about all this. We're talking about this river, we're talking about that creek. We're talking about these trees, these rocks. They're, they're mine in, in a non-possessive way. Meaning I have an obligation, I have a responsibility to these. My land doesn't just mean where I come from. It's not just this general area. It's all of where the people live that impacted how I survived. You won't know it until you come here and actually experience it for yourself. And that, that's kind of how the language is. If you're not actually experiencing it, speaking it and feeling it around you, you won't actually know it. You'll just, you'll just maybe know it, but you won't actually know it. Everything in a cultural, spiritual, and physical sense for Kadik people is centered around this river. And it's not just the Kadik people. From Klamath Lakes all the way to the ocean, all these people were connected. They were tied together and they were bonded in that way. The language isn't a one directional component of existence. Sometimes where you're at can help you learn your language, can help you identify with your language, can help you reconnect with your language. That language came out of surviving there, whether you come from there or not, by somebody learning the indigenous language of the land that they're on. You learn a little bit more about what's around there, about where that language comes from. Because Learning Kaduk, like many other languages, is not just learning sounds. 
You'll never really understand Kaduk if you don't actually understand the people and the place that it comes from. Yeah. Language is the thing that I was really interested in from early age, like probably about the time that the Beatles came to America. Uh, I was realizing that I am descended from a people that have a history, a language, uh, uh, a land, uh, a religion, and currently living in a pretty bad place because of, you know, society uh, not really placing any value on a lot of that. Uh, I decided that that's what I wanted to do, to learn my language, to be able to speak my language. Uh. We have to find people who are willing to pledge kind of allegiance to their languages and their traditional knowledge. My life now is as a time when I can figure out ways of transmitting all this knowledge. If you can hook the mothers, you're on the path to some sort of success. That's the way I feel about Mamie, that uh, she's real clear and totally committed to the language. I was lucky enough to go to school here in our ancestral territory where I got a lot of Kaduk growing up in the schools and with elders. So I, I had a base exposure, but as soon as my kids got a little bit bigger, I was really having to struggle to keep up with them. My language was at the, that of a one-year-old and they were one and speaking Kaduk fluently. And so I had to start to really apply myself to keeping up with the language. Uh-oh. She's got a master's in social work. I mean, she's very intelligent, really family-oriented. So. She seems like the perfect recruit for 20 years from now. My vision or whatever is that she will be able to provide language for that community at Orleans. And that she would, but that also she'd be able to make a living, uh, that she could devote her time to that. <laughs> There's not a lot of resources for Native people to take time to learn their language. Most Native people in our area are more concerned about living day to day than they are about um, the next steps of cultural realization and language. They're just trying to not get their kids taken by CPS and they're just trying to survive the, la the latest drama around drugs and alcohol or the la latest car wreck or the latest murder. Or, and that's a, a harsh reality of our modern people, too. Ta mu ithweum wanita. 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 Oh. Yeah. Hmm. What do you mean? Yeah, um, um, who, who, uh, um, to ib, by To ib? Huh. You know, I'm glad that my wife decided that I had, this is what I had to do. 
because I, I was also jaded and also cynical, that there was a political side to, you know, all of this that I just, just turned me off and I wouldn't have anything to do with it. And she finally said, that's it, you have to do it. You know, you, you're the one who knows this stuff, you know, and you're mad at them because they don't know. And it's like, but you, you know, so then maybe it's time for you to begin teaching. Us? Us? Oh, Achba. Achba. Kowut pa Achta Paemu. Chakai. Patumpa Ipwe um, uh, as disease. Ah, oh, um, Kemish. Kemish, Kuma, Um, Kemashahiti. Kemashiti, huh? Kemashahiti. My father in law remembers going to school upriver and, um, he would let slip a little bit of kaduk and they'd say, "Your sounds like you got a mouthful of garbage and the teacher was allowed to hit them when they did that. And so I think the shame of for being native has contributed to the alcoholism and the drug and alcohol. And so speaking your language and feeling proud to speak your language and having that cultural identity again, um, I think will really contribute to the healing of the people as well. Get up and walk away. Kick your leg up. Get up. Break, break. If you don't like to tie up, then you got to move. So for pig ship fighters, um, it's not just about MMA. It's about athleticism, it's about sports. Yeah, no. there. Understanding balance, understanding leverage, understanding strength, understanding endurance. So those concepts apply so much deeper than just the fight, than just wrestling, just boxing. We're trying to teach them some of these cultural aspects of survival in today's society. So go ahead and get that. Ian gets pretty deep and he's right here and you're getting your leg down and he's still going. I forget to push it back. You gotta get that head down and you could even do this. Okay, ready? Brace yourself here. See? You lay right on that side and then turn like this. Okay, get that leg out first thing. Drive your right knee through. The concept of knowing how to survive and exist as a community was beyond a tribe, beyond a region, beyond a language. That concept it was lived out in that appreciation, understanding, that respect, and that uh, expectation for the others to do the same. Once it comes up here, I'm in trouble. Down here, fine. I would like them to understand that they have the choice. <laughs> that it is an acceptable choice to explore who they are, to explore how they can best express themselves in the environment they live in, with the people that they live with, that they survive with. You got it. And for the ones that are Kaduk, or that are from this land, it may be easier to do it the way that it's been done for thousands and thousands of years. So maybe start there. I can help you a little bit with that, but never to force it. I don't require my kids to speak Kedic language, or when I have a class, I don't make them go to it. But, but that's the point, you know, for these young kids, there's a choice. And, and there are people, there are ones out here that can help you with these choices without having to tell you what to do or judge you for what choice you're making. Let's play charades. Yeah. Jimmy, yeah, Ihan. 
poop, it's uh, the issue. That's kind of what I'm really pushing for the young kids, whether it's through pickship or through my cultural activities or through my language lessons um, or simply through knowing who I am. Wait, you gonna put me on love? So that's something I want my kids to understand and then reinforce with themselves and then their friends and family that they learn to survive with. Because it won't always be me. Okay, we have some paintbrushes, but I have a couple of these if you want to try that also. And if you guys want some help, yeah, pie. Stencil. Oh, <laughs> Lots of stencils. Yes. The number one design that we have, we call it a tuck duck, but it's a triangle, and everything is pretty much based on that in some form. And once you start drawing triangles, you'll go, oh my gosh, that is, that's it. The triangle is, is the basis of our whole being. This is our visual vocabulary. It's so cool, my kind of like, I, I have to do stuff like that, not like, I can't. My actual that. profession is a cultural activities coordinator. So I spend my time identifying activities that are not only traditionally relevant, but also culturally relevant. Sometimes that cultural event is a traditional activity like napping arrowheads out of obsidian. Sometimes it's incorporating cultural designs or traditional designs using acrylic paint on a canvas from Walmart. <laughs> this one here is this one right here, see? Takuniv Yehuda. Yeah, that means they're going up the hill. When I was young, it was uh, elders sitting there telling us. Now, uh, young people don't have those elders. So I've got to try to figure out ways to transmit and give what I was given. And if you have your hard hat on. And it's really nice to see that this younger generation of Native people has awakened, and they too are wondering about this thing called traditional knowledge. The gift I had of growing up here, the gift I had of having a million relatives, it seemed like a burden maybe when I was younger, like, ugh, it's like made everything, life was so inconvenient where I lived. And I got older, I appreciated it, and I was really grateful I was raised here. Because the more I learn Kaduk, the more I speak Kaduk, the more I see the world in a, in a Kaduk way. So I hopefully my kids will grow up and appreciate that too. I think they will. Julian Lang became my teacher because he saw that I had a passion for it. And in the sacrifices he's made to keep the language alive, I, I really honor that and respect that because there are the handful of people like him that hadn't decided to just put their whole lives on hold and um, be with those elders in those last few years of their life. Our language would be dead. We have an old saying that when elders pass away, lots of songs are gone now like watching all these species of birds dying. That is a loss that can't be recaptured in a way. We should preserve as many, as many languages and bird species as we can. There are maybe five fluent speakers left. The whole world, this whole planet, maybe five. Is Kaduk ever going to be the primary language for this stretch of the Klamath River again? If you're looking at it from this point right now, probably not. But then if you go to the perspective, well, my kids will be able to speak to their kids in Kaduk? I hope so, that they can at least try. In my lifetime, I just want to see people understand that they have the choice. 
they can choose to pursue their language, pursue their cultural identity, and make that effort. That's what I'd love to see.